What's up, guys? It's Harry here, and welcome to the After Hours Podcast, a trading podcast where we discuss the latest updates and insights about the market. In this episode, we cover key topics such as SPY, the overall market, inflation, and trading market conditions, offering you valuable insights to help you become a better trader. Plus, we also have a referral link below that can help you save $500 off a membership. So tune in and join the conversation with James and I on the After Hours Podcast. What's going on, guys? Uh, we're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, we took off a week or so, uh, let some news uh, build up, and so now we have plenty to talk about. So I think the first thing I wanted to dive into really is this new market bounce that we've had. I mean, the SPY has been pushing pretty hard. Um, I think that we've we've changed sentiment a little bit potentially. Um, Harry, what are you thinking right now about the overall like market SPY bounce and all that? Um. I and this is just my personal opinion. I think that we still have a little bit lower to go, just because like the thing is, is that what I've noticed every time, like just like trading throughout this past, like let's say the last year, is that every time we are in that kind of bounce phase, small caps are really hot. The overall market is really hot. The like trading is really hot in general everyone's banking, everyone's having a good time. You're seeing shit like BBBY go to from like $2 to seven. Like we're getting all these insane market moves. And what happens is that all of a sudden you get the a week where the range just dries up again. And every time that has happened so far, just over the past year, we've always gone lower. So like, it, it seems to me like, like for me, at least for longing, when we're in that bounce stage, like it's great, everything's hot. It's like we're back to COVID again. Everyone is lighting up on Twitter, posting game, big gains on the short side, posting uh, big gains on the long side, posting everything, talking about, oh, how they're doing so great. And then this week, I found definitely like a shift again where we didn't have that many runners. Um, the range was pretty shit. And like, we had talked about that kind of before the podcast where like the range was pretty shit. And to me, it was just like, are we back to the slow kind of market as the spy goes down lower? Um, So that's something that I think is just for me, like pattern wise, like I always try and like pick up on patterns and stuff like that. And I've noticed that when we start to get a little bit slower, um, usually the market's taken kind of like a tank, you know? Yeah, for sure. So do you think where you your opinion is that we're gonna go lower on like general like the indices? Like do you think like yeah. things like that? Yeah, really. So spy yeah. all that stuff. You think yeah, I think we're gonna go lower. I think we're gonna be downtrending again. And I mean you can timestamp me on it. Maybe we're just taking a pause before we start to go higher, but in my opinion, I don't know. I just feel like I don't know. I just feel so like fishy and skeptical about these bounces. Like every time we've gotten to kind of like, like the 400 range, that 410 range on SPY, like that kind of bounce on the indices, everyone's just switched to bullish and then something comes out where we just get fucking clobbered again, you know? And I was talking to some other traders this weekend about that. And, you know, maybe it's one of those things where like everyone feels the same way. So the opposite happens, but when I talk to a lot of traders, like everyone's thinking way lower on the spy. Everyone's thinking that we're down for like a bearish kind of, uh, you know, turnaround. So, I mean, we'll have to see. But in my opinion, my view, you can timestamp me on this. I think we're going lower. So we are at Sunday, February 12th. It's Super Bowl day. So I actually li- I like that that's your opinion because I'm, I'm actually the complete opposite. So this is kind of cool. So I'm personally of the, of the camp of... You know, when we were trading at the lows for SPY, um, we were making new lows. I mean, I've never <clears throat> seen sentiment as bearish. Like on Twitter, um, overall people, just talking to people who aren't really market participants, you know, maybe just the 401k or other like people like that. Everyone was so negative to the point where I was getting sick of hearing it. Yeah. Now, at that point, like, you know, sentiment hadn't really changed. Um, and as we saw last week, we had the biggest inflow um, of short participants, hedge funds and, and institutions exit their positions. Um, basically, they just got squeezed out, right? That was this last week. I think that the jobs report that we had a few weeks ago, we added half a million jobs, took a lot of people by surprise because you can't really have a recession when you're adding a half a million jobs, whether that number is like kind of fake, you know, with the creation of jobs, like 
I think we, we've talked in the past about how it's so easy to make jobs, but you know, that's, those are things that the numbers see. We also see that CPI and inflation is coming down. Um, so I don't know. I almost, and I feel at the same time that there were so many, uh, you know, institutions who were not positioned to get involved on the long side. So mm-hmm. not only did we have the shorts get squeezed out on mega positions, now we have institutions saying, shit, do I need to get a little bullish and position myself to get along? Now, I sat with myself for a while and I was thinking a lot about that. Like, is this one of those scenarios where the market kind of said F you to the over bearish and squeeze them out so we can make a new leg lower, which is like how technically how stocks kind of can move, right? Uh, just like in small caps, like we need to squeeze out, you know, bust everybody's balls and then you can head lower. Um, or is this a transitional shift? And and I, for, for, for some reason, just in my head, I think this is a shift in sentiment. I think that, again, when you talk to the traditional normal person, like most people don't even think we're in a recession or we're experiencing a recession because day to day life doesn't feel it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I just I wonder if as a country we are we spend too much money, no matter how much little people have in savings. I still see bars (coughs) popping. I see they're they're full. Restaurants are still booked. You Mm -hmm. know, the Apple stores are still packed. So I don't know. I mean, it's 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 kind of cool that we have like an opposite take. And and again, I I think it's anyone's game at this point. I mean, just like anyone, nobody really truly knows um, where we're headed. I think in terms of rates, this is kind of how I look at it, right? So like rates, I feel are like kind of delayed. Um, like it takes a little bit to get the effect of the rate in. Um, you know, it's it's definitely easy to look at like the here and now and have that type of opinion. I agree 100% on that. You know, at least where I am, not much change yet. But I feel like rates are very sluggish with how they work, you know? Like, it just, in my opinion, it's just, it's it's very, very slow. It's very, very sluggish. And as people start kind of getting, like, it's like if you have savings built, you know, a, a solid like savings, emergency fund, whatever, your rates go up for the first couple months, you're like, okay, we're fine. This is doable. But then it keeps climbing a little bit and it keeps climbing a little bit. And then you're like, holy shit, we're out of savings. Like we have to kind of, you either go into debt or you're like, fuck, we can't pay this, you know? And we have to cut back on other things. So <laughs> I think personally, it's going to take a little bit of these prices to kind of like start chipping away slowly at the, at the little, like, it's like we have an ice sculpture and like, we're just slowly chipping away all the way around until the ice sculpture fucking collapses, you know? So I think that like, it takes a while for these rates to come into play. It takes a while for what's kind of been happening to come into play, to really start eating at people till they're like, holy shit, like we can't afford this anymore. We have a high ass mortgage payment. We have a high ass car payment. We have a high ass this, we have a high ass that. And people overpaid so much for shit and people are still overpaying so much for shit that I think like we're going to hit this kind of like tipping point where it's just too much. And then I I think, um, and again, I kind of want to like reiterate a little bit, like I don't necessarily think it's time to like get bullish on stocks and start like buying, uh, especially like things like real. I don't think that's that. I just, I feel like we're going to enter a period of extreme chop for a long time right. and honestly that shop could last like a decade you know because that's kind of what happened after the inflationary period um you know in, this, in the early 70s and then you know just you can go, go back in history and look at uh times of economic crisis and and see where the market went after and it was just chop does that mean that we're making all-time highs sure i think some equities might make some new highs but i also think it, but some could also make lows i just don't think that in the in like as far as spy and all that that's my opinion is we're kind of we put our bottoms in for now um, where I think that things are gonna like lag, like I this is where I really agree with what you're saying is like I've noticed in real estate, you know, with interest interest rates are probably optimistically gonna settle around five percent, you know, barring any sort of unexpected uh, news like outcome with CPI and and all that stuff. So I think rates are gonna you know adjust eventually to five percent, but at five percent rates. That's still a lot of. That's still very expensive to buy a home, you know, in this country. It's still very expensive to refi to finance a car, you know. So I think that at that point you're going to see that's where the economy and the recession will kind of be felt uh, with like normal Americans or just yeah. normal people around here. 
But at the same time, like, again, I think that just because we're in like a recession or that people are struggling with savings uh, doesn't mean necessarily the stock market's going to collapse. You know, a lot of times the markets do tend to bottom, you know, during a recession. And then, you know, we kind of have to live through it. I think people here, unfortunately, will spend no matter what. <laughs> it's like I, I, I see it day to day. It's crazy, right? Like I see people who are struggling to pay their bills, but somehow they always have the new iPhone. Somehow they always have they're always they have all the streaming services, the Netflix is the Hulu is all that stuff. Right. Um, we're spenders, you know, and I but I, I it almost feels like it's needed some sort of some economic reset. And again, I think what's tough with the stock market is that when you really look at it, average people aren't really participating. You know, you, you'll have the retirement accounts that usually are run by someone else. You don't have many people. I don't know many people who control their own retirement account or, or, or you know, even actively participate in buying stocks. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a great conversation over the last week that I thought uh, Google was a good uh, buy um, coming up because they just got hammered the other day. I think they, they lost like 6% a day. Yeah. Um, and that was all because of a failed AI, um, like, news basically they had they had a, a soft a demo software and and it failed it, it it got a very basic question wrong and and off of that microsoft popped and and google went down and, and i'm and i tell people that and they're like well well you know they, they have no idea what's even in their retirement so that's why sometimes i feel like the market is it's just going to be really choppy for a while and and that's kind of that i also think that like it, during covid it was like an environment where people were getting short and they were getting squeezed out and they were like re-adding, you know, like yeah. how many times in the uptrend in COVID did you hear people who were fighting the market say, OK, I think it's time to get bullish. You know, no one said that. Everyone was like, it's not time to get bullish. They just kept re-adding to their shorts. You know, how many short squeezes did we hear of people and big firms blowing up during COVID, like blow up after blow up after blow up after blow up of people getting short, no risk management, re-adding getting short, no risk management, re-adding, you know? And now we're in a situation where we're hearing people, I'm I'm short, I'm getting squeezed. Okay, maybe it's time to go long, you know? I just feel like, like, could you imagine you're in the small cap and <clears throat> you're fucking trading this thing. It's, it's under VWAP, it's at four bucks. And the shit goes over high at eight to five, halts up to five, and you're like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get out of my short and I'm going to get long. How many times have we seen those members in the discipline workshop who want to like switch biases all the time and they go from short and then they go to long and then they get stopped out on long and then they're like, oh, I'm going to go short again. And then they, you know what I mean? Like how many times have we seen people like that? And we're like, okay, stick with one bias, you know, do whatever. So I feel like people are just fucking confused and the market is just fucking with them. And if we go lower, I think now, like, people don't really know, like, like, we're, spies lower. Everyone's like, whoa, we're bearish. We're bearish. We got one fucking bear market bounce. We're bullish. We're bullish. Everyone fl flips long. We go back down. They're like, okay, we're bearish. You know, like, we're in this situation where people just don't really know. We don't really have that confirmation. And <clears throat> I think that if these rates start slowly eating away at people, you know, time after time after time, then we could definitely see uh, it go lower. And wouldn't it be funny if all these institutions got squeezed out right here at the top and then we go way lower and then they get short again, squeeze them out again. You know, it's just like a one big like liquidity fuck. So to me, I'm just like, I could see us going way lower. I think that we are going to go lower. That's just my personal opinion. It, it, could, it could easily happen. I think that um, as far as like, portfolio management like now it's like you just have to be you know comfortable buying companies that you know have these like moats and they're very like protected and cash flow positive and and i think that there's a there's a huge push out of uh out of uh growth stocks and like we're gonna push towards value you yeah. know that whole classic you know ben graham mindset of you know you're buying companies with good pe ratios and you're buying companies with strong balance sheets and and companies that have protected assets and stuff and i think that that's gonna be it because again if we're even having this conversation, we're talking about, you know, spies is not even that far off the all-time highs versus the lows of what we put in the last like two years. And like, realistically, none of us know this thing could cut fucking greater and it, or it could rip to new highs on positive news. Like, dude, we, ne we never know. Obviously, I don't think the war in Ukraine is going to end anytime soon, but God for, you know, who knows, you know, tomorrow we can wake up to news that there's a ceasefire and it's over. 
and we rip to new, you know, we don't know. And that's why I feel like chops going to happen. Cause like in barring any news, I mean, we're, nobody seems to have a clue. You know, I listen to all these very, very good financial podcasts and, yeah. and, and I hear people making strong bull cases and then making strong bear cases. And it's like, these are very intelligent, like some of the best, of the best minds in the industry. And just seeing people really just clamor at ideas is, is pretty wild mm -hmm. because, you know, you'd think you'd be able to at this point say, all right, like, you know, we have the ingredients here. We know exactly what's coming, but like, I don't think anybody does. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't. And like, I mean, for God's sakes, look at Tesla. Tesla got slapped down to a hundred dollars a share, $109. And then it doubled. It went, it went to 200 bucks a share. Yeah. And like, how, how do you trade that? You know, That's I, mean, what I mean, in these strong market bounces, it is the most irrational fucking price action you'll ever see. Once we top out, we start to go red. We start to get choppy. There's like less manipulation. Like what was the only small cap stock that really got manipulated hard? It was KPRX. Yes, you could say like, yeah, manipulation, whatever. But the only one that I really saw was that like CELZ or whatever that we were talking about that day where we went from uh, like close to a dollar up to a dollar 40. That was really the only like rigged manipulated ticker I saw. Other than that, it was pretty fucking tame. And when you go from a week of having multiple tickers being like rigged and manipulated all the time to only like one or two or three, that tells me that, okay, something's fucking wrong here. Something's off here because in these bounces, I trade at my best. I trade at my peak. It's amazing to long. We have range. Like we are both talking to each other, texting each other. You're short. You're like, I'm trading at my peak. I'm trading well, you know? And then all of a sudden we get this week where it's like, everything's like shut off. Like small caps are just shut off, you know? And every single time that fucking happens, bro, I go into like a depression for like two months because I'm like, shit, bro, there's nothing to trade. I've made all this money and now it's just turned off again. So for me, that tells me that I need to either modify my strategy in the markets to like add like a swing element or add a, a different type of element or add like a short element or something like that for the choppiness and um, you know try and avoid that kind of slow period and that slow time because I think that during the slow times, like, you know, I'm texting Alex. I'm like, bro, it feels like I'm an idiot. It feels like I'm, I'm stupid. Then all of a sudden market gets flipped on. I feel like I'm a genius. You know, anything. You can log anything. It's back to the COVID market. It's back. It's spies bouncing, you know. And like I, I look and I, I went back and I'm like, when was last time I felt like this? When was the last period I felt like this? It was July. It was summer. Summer. We were getting that big bounce in towards like August, whatever. Everyone was crazy. Everyone was like euphoric. People were investing. It was crazy. And then we got that bounce again. And November was a little bit slower. October was a little bit slower. December was, you know, starting to pick up again. And then January, February, we're going crazy again. So to me, it's just like when the market's euphoric, I feel like small caps are euphoric. It's crazy. Everyone's happy. You know, and COVID, we got that you know, from, you know, when the market was just bull case, bull case, bull case, we were getting hot, you know, like hot chicks every day. We were getting manipulated stocks every day. It was crazy every day. And now it feels like at the tops of these bear bounces, it's like a, a switch flicks and we're back to low range, slow market, choppiness, waking up in the morning saying like, should I even really trade? You know, so I think really for the most part, you know, I'm always taking that into account for sure. Yeah. I think what worries me a little bit about, especially small and mid cap stuff is that we, I think we're, we had a really uh, big January effect this year. I think a lot of uh, people and market participants obviously took advantage of tax loss harvesting in December. And then there was that big pushback on the market. Like I was just reading this thing. Like if you got long, like U.S. equities, like a like a, a substantial like healthy portfolio of U.S. equities on January first, I think you already would have made like a nine percent return, right? Which is like most time the S and B like a ten percent a year is ridiculous, you know. So like the reality is like maybe that was just that big push, like everyone got caught off guard for a minute. All this money came in and it made small and mid caps light up, and it made everything light up. And now that we've kind of hit this like this peak, like. I don't know. That that does worry me. Again, do, do I think that means we get we crater again? No, I think that we're just gonna 
chop and it's going to be rough. And I think especially if you're a trader day to day, it's you're going to have to be super selective. And I think that the range is just might get sucked up again. And I, mm-hmm. what I hate is that when I log on to Twitter, which I actually deleted again this week, finally, but I, when you log on to Twitter, like you see everyone, it's that euphoric, like you said, that feeling of like the COVID markets where things are ripping, there yeah. was plays every day, shorts are making money, longs are making money. And I don't feel like that's going to really last. And I, I don't know why I could not give you a reason why I just, that that's, that's the sentiment shift. And it's, it's crazy because we came off a year of shit. And I think that to think that things are going to change in this last month, I don't know. I don't think that, I don't, I don't see it. I hope it does obviously for our sake, you know, it's our, that's our cash flow. but at the same time, it's, I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see it. Cause I still see a lot of traders struggling day to day and I don't know. I'm, I'm not too sure how to, how to analyze this. And, you know, I would, be- I'd say like, I, I would pose you the question. You're James Freelander. Okay. Yeah. You, you bought fucking stocks on January 1st. You're up 9%. If that 9% goes red, do you panic? No, probably not. Would you panic if that if that 9% got taken away? No, as a portfolio, if I was running a portfolio, no, because especially like for me, like the, the stocks that I bought, you know, early January, December were companies that I would intend to hold for a long time. So Let's no. just say you bought SPY. You bought SPY, you're up whatever percent you're up and that that position goes red. At what point do you panic? I think if Spy puts in a new low, I think if Spy were to put in a new low, that's where you start to fucking panic. I yeah. mean, that's because to, the recipe for going. us not, I, I, it's got, it's like I said, man, it's going to be absolutely wild to watch. And I think <coughs> that in the worst, I think the worst part about this market is it could be a day. You could have one day where we just implode or we rip higher. I mean, it's, it's trading. Like I was the other day, I was shorting um, BBBY. Uh, the day after the um the filing for bankruptcy and yeah. you know i'm trading it along i was messaging with alex we're watching spy and we're and it's like it's like almost like when spy wants to have a bid it's unlimited like this stock was so red and then all of a sudden it finds a bid and it's just mm-hmm. pushing up and up and up of course the day i'm getting short bed bath and beyond and and but then the days that you needed to have a fucking red day it's, i mean you want it to go up it's just like unlimited down yeah that's why i don't know i feel like nobody has any clue like for example the ai sector i thought was going to light up i thought the ai sector was going to become this like multi week if not month sector of strength and it died it completely died as as spy was making you it doesn't even make as spy was pushing it doesn't really make sense to me but you know, that's so. what i mean i feel like the switch this week got flipped off if this yeah. was back in a big bounce like you know i really do think that 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 sector ai could have fucking got blown out of the water that could have went to like crazy prices but we just this week this switch just got flipped i feel and maybe we're going to show up on Monday. You know, right now it's like Sunday afternoon, right before the Super Bowl. You know, maybe we show up on Monday and everything's flipped back on again. But I just feel like when we get to the tops of these goddamn bounces, bro, it's just small caps are dry. Everything's slow. Everyone's back to complaining. We're back to a bear market. And I think that, like, for me, I really do think that we're in for a little bit lower just because that's just been the pattern, you know? So, all right. So what, then I'll ask you, so what would change for you to then switch your mindset and say, shit, like it's, it's time to buy stocks. If we get like to like, if we get back to those like kind of highs or we get like, at least like kind of close, um, you know, that would be something that I'd be like, okay, that, you know, that's obviously substantial. Like, you have to be really proven wrong, I think. Like, not, not you know, you need some some strength and you have to really be kind of proven that, okay, this is not a bounce. We are definitely out of this, you know? I think you have to uh, just, you know, number one, we would have to be super hot in small caps again, I think, because like that would tell me, okay, we're hot in small caps again. Obviously, they flipped the switch back on. Obviously, we're gone. I think also you need to get past the, the stage where we're like, this isn't a bounce anymore. You know, how do we get past that stage where 
like me and you can sit here and agree, okay, this is not a bounce anymore, right? I think that is the key thing where we can sit and both say, all right, Harry, you were wrong. It did not go lower. There is definitely uh, kind of like, it, it's definitely not a bounce anymore. <laughs> I think that is where we both say, you know, we're back in bull market. I would love to see it. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. I'd love to see it. I love to bet against myself. You know, I just feel like right now it's just like, you know, I don't know, bro. I just feel like we're in for lower. Yeah, I, I completely, I mean, I understand your, your mindset, but I guess at what point is it that these companies like took their medicine enough, right? Because like, I've been doing a lot of like earnings call listening and like, you're starting to see companies smart enough, right? You see Meta, you see uh, Disney, you see uh, Apple, you see all these major companies saying that saying the right stuff. Layoffs are happening. Um, they're trying to tighten up the the, the mothership there. And yeah. you know, it's at what point you see a company like Meta that just got that got clobbered, and now they're finally kind of bouncing, all because they said the right stuff. You know, I was just listening to another podcast. They're talking about Disney. It's the same idea. Bob Iger came back. He's cutting people. He's re-adding dividends. I mean, he's doing everything you would want to see a CEO do. That's where it's tough. And like, at what point is it that, and I'm not asking, I'm just thinking a lot. At what point is it that stocks kind of, kind of take away and are different and not really engaged anymore with like sentiment and like, and like just the overall market. Again, it's so tough, right? Because we live in a world where we just see so much spending. We see excess spending. We see people who just, I, again, like, for God's sakes, I mean, I went out this weekend, I went out to dinner and it's just crazy watching the world. Like it almost feels like nothing has changed since pre-COVID. It feels like the markets are like, everything's just back, you know? And and I, I often wonder at times, like I, I've had a theory that that the average person is getting so uh, disengaged with the market and they're getting further and further from like being involved. I think our generation, you know, we're only a few years apart, but I think our generation has like the least active portfolios like the yeah. least active participants in the market and it's like we've kind of hit that point you know but i don't know it's going to be interesting like i said what is it it's february 12th super bowl sunday and i'm very interested to see i mean we could we could do this podcast next week and yeah. one of us could have been could have been completely right or wrong yeah or we do exactly nothing, or we do nothing and the market doesn't change you know i i i, I think that we're gonna bounce around until 2024 i think the election is what's gonna choose our path for a long time yeah you know? and i mean we, we can kind of transition to that something i wanted to talk about was the state of the union you know we're, we're obviously accelerating into um into a, a time where uh elections are going to be kind of the topic again uh you know donald trump is coming out you know basically saying he's going to be he wants to be a candidate desantis is going to be a candidate and then we have biden and possibly gavin newsom so you know, we had the State of the Union. We're obviously at, in complete disarray as a country. We it, it was almost embarrassing to watch, right? We're seeing Republicans screaming at, at Biden, you know, calling him a liar during the State of the Union, which, to be honest, as, as someone who's more moderate myself, I hated see, I hate seeing it because that's at the one time when Republicans could just sit there yeah. and not and almost let Biden do damage to himself. They yeah. they get loud. When they shouldn't. And same thing with, you know, it, it's where the party itself is so divided. We have McCarthy telling Marjorie Taylor Greene to like, shh, you know, all that stuff. And then like Mitt Romney was yelling at um that gentleman, I think from New York, the guy who got caught lying about himself. And it's like, it's embarrassing, right? So it's like, it's like where, I don't even know where we head from here. And I think yeah. that that's kind of what everyone's going to wait for. Yeah. And it, it, well, it's the same thing. Like if you look at the State of the Union, like the one where Trump was, Pelosi ripped up the speech. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's all it's all theater and it's all yeah. just a distraction, right? Like the Democrats are badly behaved. The Republicans are badly behaved. And I'm sure you had a lot of Republicans who saw that and were like, yeah, that's right. He's a liar. You know, it just they're all just doing it to appease their base. And you yeah. really see that, like, the Democrats really go after the rich. They really go after the rich. I mean, how many times was he like? we're going to take those wealthy corporations or we're going to tax those billionaires. And I feel like each party right now is trying to appease different, uh, different, like different types of people, right? If you're the Democrats, you have to do this balancing act between uh, having poor people on your side and moderately wealthy 
people on your side and billionaires on your side. And if you're the Republicans, you're trying to do the exact same thing, you know? So Biden probably feels, you know what? Rich people, eh, they're probably going to still vote for me anyway because they don't want to see Trump in or whatever, or, you know, they're Democrats or whatever. He's going to keep relying on that. And I think you have Republicans saying, oh, well, we're going to try and, you know, they're all trying to appease to different types of people and different groups of people. And he must see in the pool, polls that he's, you know, favored among rich people. So let's try and bring the middle class and the whatever people up. And I just feel like the whole politics now, it's, I, I don't know, like, I, I hate, I, I feel like it's so much worse in Canada, like when I just look at, if you take United States versus Canada, because in the United States, I feel like at least when you talk to people or talk to MIC members, a lot of people are really informed. But in Canada, we don't have that. In Canada, a lot of people are not informed. Like we have so many things coming to Canada. Like, for example, in our, uh, our healthcare system shit right now. So Trudeau came out and said, okay, well, we're going to, um, we're going to fund healthcare. And when you look at the disclaimers for the healthcare funding, it's these like 15 minute cities that they want to do where people can't leave their district or you get a fine and it comes out of your fucking taxes. That is scary shit that people just have no idea about here. Another thing, digital ID. So there's just going to be one ID that they can, you know, track you all the way around, have access to all your healthcare information, have access to all your shit, know where you've gone, know where you've been, your debit card, your digital ID are the same thing. That is fucking scary. But people here have no idea because it's just not reported, right? And so at least in the States, you you guys kind of have like Fox News, you have CNN, each are at opposite ends of the spectrum. Here, we only have one, one, one news, CBC. We have like a couple others, like, you know, CTV or whatever, but they're all cut from the same cloth, right? So would you want to live in a country where your news is just straightforward? All it's, It reminds me of like China right now, where we are at, you know? It's absolutely crazy. And people are going to say, oh, Harry, you're being too extreme. You're being too this. You're being too that. But when you actually research the little bottom disclaimers of these, these bills and what they want to do, and in, in like they tried to take away all the guns, every all the hunting guns, everything, and they ended up getting, uh, they ended up saying, well, no, we're not going to do that anymore because there was so much uproar because, you know, they were just trying to get it out there in the news and on social media because it's not really getting reported in the actual news what people are actually doing. So it is kind of scary. And we had that China balloon that was in Canada, right? They just shot it down over Yukon yesterday, I believe. And I was saying to my girlfriend last weekend, like, I've, I'm seeing on Twitter that there's another like balloon or like spacecraft in Canada right now. You flick on the news, that's not even there, right? That's not even there. All you would see on the news is that, oh, they shot one down in the U.S. It's no problem. You turn on the Canadian television channels, that's not there. That's literally not there. And now what they want to do is with this Bill C-11 or whatever, they want to actually be able to censor what you see on the internet. So if James Freelander writes a negative tweet about Trudeau, I won't see it. It will be completely blocked. It'll say, this tweet is unavailable, which is absolutely crazy. So we're getting into this kind of crazy situation and Trudeau still has like three years left anyway so it's like you know he's not till 25 so I guess it's like two but it's absolutely crazy when you look at all this shit and you know the people here have no idea so at least in the states you have s some of the population who has some of a clue but in Canada bro it's crazy here like, it's wild I mean I think the the thing is that and I try to I try to reiterate this to a lot of people because a lot, a lot of my friends get in political fights all the time. And and I try to say, like, you don't understand. I mean, one one thing that's really nice about being involved in like financial markets, like you we've met people all around the world, right? We have friends in, in Europe, you know, Prague, yeah. you know, Turkey, everywhere, right? And when, when you really do a deep dive and you think about it, like living in the US is still, in my opinion, we are still living at in the pinnacle best country because of everything that we have as far as information. Like you said, there's information out there. Uh, our freedoms are still very much there. As much as people like to think they aren't, we're very much, even with, you know, there's such controversy about like COVID vaccines, you know, other countries were way more strict than we were ever were. You know, at least here we had, we had states that were different and, and all that. And it was, we were unique that way. But 
I do feel like here people are losing sight of that and like they don't understand that how lucky we really are, you know, and they get caught up so much in these small like news headlines now. And it's going to be figuring out, you know, especially this, in my opinion, this 2024 election will be the most important election that we've had in our history, because I think it's going to determine the course of where we're headed for the next 10 years, you know, because obviously I think if we if we have a change and a Republican gets becomes president, I think there's going to be a it's just going to be a bloodbath all around and it's just going to be a lot of fighting and everything and you know i think i think biden uh as far as politically is made an intelligent move by starting to target and talk about uh how he's now saying that republicans are coming after social security and medicaid and all that stuff you know and now i hear people saying that they're like oh like oh we can never vote a republican and because of this and i'm and i sit there and i say how can you focus on news headlines day to day like that from republicans or democrats when our country is spending trillions and trillions of dollars on wars, on, you know, medical vaccines, yeah. on all this stuff, like we that that's where we need to focus. We need to focus on who's going to control the spending over the next five, four years. Who's going to control? I mean, our debt is out of control. I mean, they're trying right now is a big argument about raising the debt ceiling versus not. You know, those are where I'm going to be focused as a voter. I will not pick a party. I will pick whoever's going to propose the right ideas to get our country back on track fiscally and you know security wise everything I, it really is crazy and like that's why like we can revert all the way back to our conversation about the markets like i don't think anybody has any fucking idea anymore no idea because we don't know where we're headed so how can we both of us like i can't say we're going to new highs and i can't say we're going to look because i just don't i don't think we have any clue you know and you, it, it's going to be interesting for the next year until elections come and and who knows, you know, I guess we're, we'll, we'll both be kind of sitting here wondering for a while. Yeah, well, 100%. And also, I think that there's a lot of distractions right now, you know, like, if you take a look, at, like on a grand scale of things, right, we had that China balloon come in, right? That was like, that dominated the news headlines. I was obsessed with it too. Don't get me wrong. I love a good, I love a good yeah. distraction. I love a good time. But there were a lot of other things happening during that time, right? Like in Ohio, for instance, you know, you're getting these, uh, what did the government do there? They, they burned some crazy toxic chemical right in Ohio. And that was just like not really reported. Did you see that? Yeah, they were telling people they should leave because it's unsafe to, to stay there. Yeah, like that should be on the news. Like the government should not be doing that. You know, there's a lot of things going on that could be in the headlines but instead it's just like oh my god there's china balloon. like china has been spying on us forever right <clears throat> u.s has been spying and it poses the question would you rather china have your tiktok data or google have your other data or apple have your other data or whatever like do you do you care more about your own country spying on you or do you care about more of a foreign country spying on you right you know like to me it's just like what's the difference canada china spying me? same fucking shit it's like this is what I, this is what I'm getting at is like people obsessively you know how many people message me about this this goddamn balloon and like yes it's very interesting and like I was interested too right but like at the same time you just said it right it's like dude, these people are scrolling on TikTok getting their the news about the balloon and I'm like you care so much right now that like what this balloon's flying over our heads but you're sitting on TikTok I mean as a country I mean, as a country too like we ban companies like Huawei and like these companies that have these massive Chinese like uh, information that can they steal info from us, you know, whether it's like facial recognition, you know, yeah. body movements, all that stuff. And and yet here we are, like it's like the biggest thing. I was just at a family party last night. Everyone's talking about the fucking balloon, this UFO thing that we just shot down. But I'm like, you guys, like people, I, I think citizens of every country right now, and this is why, like, you can go back episodes, why I believe what Elon Musk is doing on Twitter is so important because. We have responsibility as citizens of any country that we are a member of to yeah. be informed all over and yeah. not just trust the source. Like that's why for me, I have five podcasts I listen to, you know, in all five of those, like they all have different people on them with different views. Some are very, very conservative. Some are very liberal. Some are, very, and I, I listen to everything and I go on Twitter, I get news, but then I go do self-research myself and I find people that you know, in my life, I have a friend that works in government and I ask him and I, and I get different views because dude, we're just sitting here. And this is what I mean. Nobody has any clue what's going yeah. on, you know? So 
It's going to be interesting. And I think that we'll record our next episode probably in a week. And, and I'm, I'm sure we'll be having a completely different conversation about like the state of things, because it seems like it's an ever changing news source now, yeah. week to week. I mean, for God's sakes, there was a period. Dude, you go back a decade, no one gave a shit what the, what the Fed was doing. No yeah. one turned into that shit. I no. mean, no one gave, no one cared. No one cared about any of this stuff. We've always had inflation, levels of inflation. We've always had the prices of things are always going up. People didn't fucking care, but now it's every day. It's a news story after news story after news story. I'm sure next week there'll be 20 more balloons coming our way. Yeah. And we'll be talking about that. Yeah, exactly. Right. And there's, there's bigger, there's, I, in my opinion, I think there's definitely like bigger stuff. Like China has been spying forever, right? Your own government has been spying forever on the fucking citizens. What the, what the hell's the difference? You know, if China has my TikTok data, go ahead, you know, yeah. Like, what are you gonna see? Some girls fucking dancing or some fucking <laughs> news stories? Like, what are you gonna see, bro? What are you gonna see? I I'd be fine making that publicly on Twitter. Dude, people oh, I I've said it for years, right? People could spy on me all the time. You know what they're gonna find? They're gonna find boredom. Like it's like, but that's but that's everything. That's how most people feel. So that's why I find it funny. People get so obsessed with these headlines, and it's like, dude, you care so much now, but like, why? Like, there's other things that are more important. And and again, it's just a there's there's people of of certain IQ I think that they get stuck in these like these circles of just news headline after news headline but they don't talk about the things that really matter these are people who really have no influence or impact yeah. or even probably participate in markets so it's it really like, let's talk about how the World Economic Forum wants to do like they're literally saying like we're gonna have a major cyber thing happen by 2025 like that's scary bro <laughs> but instead we're talking about this balloon this harmless fucking yeah. balloon. Dude, I'm telling you, it drives me, it drives me absolutely insane. And like, but again, you can talk to people and like, when people hyper focus on politics, and they don't really look at like the big picture of the stuff. Like, again, there was a period of time where people when they voted, you know, it was about the country, it wasn't just party affiliation, it was like, what is better for the country, you know, and there was a time when each party wasn't so different. Now we're like, two conflicted sides, like, we really should have a civil war <laughs> like our country is so different you know and it's like people need to wake up and realize like dude we're, we still have a common cause you know so i don't know but we could i'm sure we could ramble about this for hours and hours and and we yeah. could but um you know coming into next week like i said we'll we'll have a lot more to talk about i'm sure yeah exactly and uh yeah just gonna be a wild fucking ride bro <laughs> it's gonna be good and if i will say this is the last thing i want to say Let's see what the market does after February, right? January, February, let's go. We'll get to March. And then we're going to place a bet on the direction of the market. That's my. That's what I want to do with you at some point. But we'll see what comes in at the end of this month. And then we'll make a. We'll make our little wager. But Yeah, for sure, bro. Then, All right. Uh, well, thanks for, thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, we'll see everyone for the next one. Yeah, see you guys.